The small intestine is another classic example of the overall organization of the four layers of the gastrointestinal system. Like most other gastrointestinal organs that have a lumen, we have a mucosa, we have a submucosa, we have a muscularis, and we have a serosa. The reason why I said serosa for a small intestine is virtually the entire small intestine, a jejunum or ileum, I mean, uh, is covered by peritoneum and is intraperitoneal. So if you look closely, you may see some mesothelial cell landings on the surface, which I hope we will see. Otherwise, let's review the classical layers, and it really doesn't matter where we start. Uh, also, I don't think it's really that important that we differentiate histologically between ileum and jejunum. Let's just say there's a few subtle differences. And of course, the main one is that the uh, ileum has more uh, submucosal infoldings. I'm sorry, the jejunum has more submucosal infoldings called plicae, but the ileum has more uh, lymphoid tissue in the submucosa, often referred to as pyres patches. Let's run it down and logically let's go from the lumen to the outside. The uh, mucosa of the small intestine is arranged in a very distinctly papillary fashion. You could see uh, these uh, clear cells which are goblet cells and the cells which are not clear are absorptive cells. The chief job of the small intestine is absorption. So uh, there is an abundance of abor ab absorptive cells. As you go further down, uh, you'll get more goblet cells. So generally there's more goblet cells also in the uh, ileum relative to the jejunum. The lamina propria constitutes the core of these uh, papillary or villus or villi in the mucosa. And uh, like any other lamina propria is rich in cells like lymphocytes, macrophages, fibroblasts, blood vessels. And of course, in addition, you will see many of these uh, lymphatic looking spaces. In other words, thin endothelial line spaces with no blood cells, which are the lacteals. So here is a uh, goblet cell of the epithelium of the mucosa. Here are some absorptive cells. Here's the lamina propria. Here are the various connective tissue and lymphoid cells of the lamina propria, such as macrophages, lymphocytes, plasma cells. Here uh, perhaps is a, a small either blood vessel or lacteal. And here we are traveling now further into the deeper parts of the mucosa. And we can see pretty much the same type of arrangement. We see a lot of lymphocytes here. And uh, we are now very close to the end of the mucosa. And that's why we're starting to see some lymphoid patches in the submucosa, which are very, very, very abundant. What you see here is probably a remnant of a muscularis mucosa, or perhaps a little dip of submucosal connective tissue. I really don't know yet. I suspect it's just the fibrous connective tissue. Uh, here is the connective tissue of the submucosa. Here is a secondary lymphoid nodule or lymphoid follicle in the submucosa. Notice these extend into the mucosa as well. Here is the relatively loose pain connective tissue of the submucosa. Here are some blood vessels or, and or lymphatics. Also note how easy it is to confuse spindly fibroblasts of uh, submucosal connective tissue with spindly nuclei of smooth muscle cells. Only a trichrome stain can basically solve the difference in many cases because the collagen will stain bluish green and the smooth muscle fibers won't. You know these are circular fibers because they are spindly when we cut the colon transversely to the axis. And you know these are longitudinal outer fibers. You know occasionally you'll see little connections of neural or ganglion looking cells 
between the longitudinal and uh, circular layer, which represent uh, the uh, myenteric plexus. Notice uh, we have some uh, connective tissue of the serosa, blood vessel, artery, vein, fat, connective tissue. And last but not least, these tiny little cells all the way out on the surface are the mesothelial cells, like here, yeah, possibly here, but definitely here. Probably a couple here which are slightly out of focus. Very possibly there, probably there, probably there. And uh, this is what makes it a serosa or a peritoneum or a visceral peritoneum rather than just the connective tissue adventitia. Let's go back in. Mesothelial cells, uh, serosa, serosal connective tissue, outer longitudinal muscle fibers, uh, probably a couple of uh, nerve cells in the myenteric plexus, circular spindly arranged smooth muscle, uh, submucosal connective tissue, some blood vessels in the submucosa. There's an artery. There is probably a vein there and there. There's some lymphoid tissue. Whenever you get a lot of lymphoid tissue, you know that you're probably in the ileum rather than a jejunum. There's an extension of submucosal connective tissue, possibly to form a plica, P-L-I-C-A, circularis, which is increases the uh, mucosal surface area. This is the uh, mucosa now because you can see the glands, you can see the lamina propria. Um, you may see a little uh, few smooth muscle bundles of the muscularis mucosae. And last but not least, we're still in the mucosa. We can see goblet cells, we can see absorptive cells. And we could see at the very, very surface these nice, uh, perfect little villi. Uh, we can't really go any further, but I can guarantee you most of these cells are our plasma cells and lymphocytes, macrophages, and uh, that's either a capillary or a lymphatic. That's either a capillary or a lymphatic. That's probably a lymphatic, but if it has a blood vessel in it, I'll change my theory. And the rest of this stuff is what we call caca, which, and you could even see the uh, tiny bacterial uh, rods as well. Thank you very much.